Hey, this is Greg and welcome to another Wild Edibles and Herbal Plants video. This is Wild Edible and Herbal Plants number 35. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about horse nettle. Now, this plant has absolutely no edible uses, so I get to skip that disclaimer, but it does have some herbal and medicinal uses, so I got to do that one. I am not a herbalist or a doctor. I do not diagnose or treat any illness. If you're suffering from something, be sure and contact a doctor or a certified herbalist for treatment. This is for uh, educational purposes only. So let's talk about horse nettle. Horse nettle is a perennial member of the nightshade family. Its Latin name is Solanum carolinese. Solanum carolinese. Now, got my gloves again we got to put these bad boys on it's considered a noxious wheat can be found in most of the lower 48 states in the united states with the exception of montana wyoming north dakota and nevada now just because it hadn't been reported in those places don't mean that it's not there but all the others it has been reported in since it is a member of the nightshade family, it is considered toxic. It has thorns. It's related to the tomato and the potato and all that good garbage. It has violet colored to white five pointed flowers. It has a yellow to ooh, I don't know if you can yeah maybe just a little it has yellow to orange to light white thorns all over this thing it is considered an noxious weed to a lot of people and to some people it's considered invasive though I have a hard time calling a native species invasive it just thrives real well the leaves are a little jagged and it produces a fruit which looks a little bit, and I'm a little early for the fruit, looks a little bit like a tiny yellowy orange tomato. That's actually where it gets one of its common names from, which is called devil's tomato. It is toxic. Tell you right straight off the bat. Fatalities have been reported in children who eat the, the fruit. Um, so just keep that in mind. But it does have medicinal uses. Native Americans used to take the leaves and used wilted leaves or dried leaves as a tea and gargled it for treatment of sore throats, drank that same tea for treatment of internal parasites. Now right here I want to talk about something that I talked about a couple of weeks ago. This is actually considered a safer alternative than Indian pink, and since Indian pink is a threatened species, and this isn't, a lot of your herbalists have gone here instead of to Indian pink. A poultice is made from the leaves to treat poison ivy. Uh, and it has been used, it has been condensed and used as an insecticide. Now, I don't know how much you're going to use it. If the world goes to pot, you might. Um, I have used it one time as a poultice for uh, poison ivy, and it worked pretty good. Worked better than everything else I tried, at least that time. So... These leaves can be dried, can be stored for an extremely long period of time for treatment. You can use the dried leaves as, uh, in, as part of your poultice for your uh, poison oak treatment. But uh, be careful with it, all right? This is Greg, hoping you have a great day. If you would like a PDF informational download on this plant they will be available extremely soon and there'll be a link in the notes as soon as it's available so step by step we're bringing rural back bye bye